my job is uh, I work as an advanced paramedic for the National Ambulance Service in, in Wicklow at the moment. I've been doing that for 20 odd years. I'm currently a member of FEC and I'm the chair of the Quality and Safety Committee there. Uh, and in my spare time, uh, I found myself as the injury prevention um, and first aid officer for the IRFU since about this time last year. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, and this is anatomically correct, uh, <laughs> apart from this bit. Uh, so um, about 10 years ago, um, I found myself working in training and development full-time in the National Ambulance Service in the Eastern Region. And uh, I got a phone call from Billy Timmons, uh, or, or somebody I can't remember at this stage, to attend a local meeting in Shalala about the idea of a community first responder programme. Uh, went down, had a meeting late night in, 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 in the back of a pub in Shalala, and the phones didn't stop ringing for about four years after that. Um, so I've, I've been involved uh, at the beginning of this, and it's, uh, again, just to restate, the amount of work and uh, effort that's been put in by a small handful of people in Wicklow has been absolutely fantastic. And to see this number of people in this room uh, eight, ten years afterwards is, is just a fantastic um, uh, recognition of the work that they've put in, in challenging times over the last couple of years, it has to be said. Um, so uh, over the last couple of years, I've been... Um, involved with the IRFU um, uh, in providing uh, and running some training programs, um, uh, the Safe Rugby Standard Approach to Field Emergencies in Rugby. Uh, this time last year I found myself in a, a little bit more of a structured position with them as the, as the first aid officer. Um, to give you a little bit of background of where we are, and it's really not a first responder program, but it, you know, it, has, it has some benefits. Uh, Irish rugby, and I didn't realise this, although I'm a fan, I didn't realise quite how big it is, there are somewhere in the region of about 160,000 people playing rugby in this country uh, every year, with somewhere in the region of about 4,000 referees and about 18,000 coaches. Um, we do know from a survey that, that, that they conducted in the medical department in the IRFU a couple of years ago, that they would suggest that they have a lot of people who have first aid and they would suggest that they have a, a, a significant number of people who attend matches and training. Uh, it may not be real. Uh, about 50% of all the clubs and schools responded to the survey and this is what we got from them. Um, they suggest that they have a lot of kit uh, and about 70 odd percent say that they have an AED. Uh, it, again, we're not quite sure if that's reliable because in, in the last couple of, of uh, certainly the last several months, we've been out to a lot of clubs and schools and, and we don't see evidence of this equipment there. Um, what was positive is that a lot of them um, suggested as part of the, res the, the survey that they uh, would be interested in getting involved uh, in some first aid training and some rugby specific first aid training. Um, so really the, the positives from us are that about 70 odd percent of the 240 odd rugby clubs around the country suggested that they already had an AED with some people trained in it. Um, although worryingly one of the first courses that we did um, last year when we were on site providing the training we asked the, the, the participants to show us their defib. Uh, it required four phone calls, a guy to travel about four miles in from his house to open up the bar, to open up the cupboard, to take out the box that the defibrillator had been delivered in two years previously. So although they may have them, there is probably a lack of awareness that they need to be accessible uh, and checked and all the other bits and pieces. Um, so 80 odd people, say, 80 odd percent said that they would be interested in participating in some sort of a, an IRFU mandated or led um, um, programme, which is probably why and how we developed the, um, the Safe Rugby programme. Uh, some negative stuff, um, a large portion of the rugby clubs around the country don't have access to a club doctor. Those that do, some of the bigger clubs have constant access to a club doctor who's going to be there at a lot of the senior games, some of the junior games, a lot of the training sessions, um, but most of them will have no medical support. Uh, a lot of them will have access at the senior level, uh, the, the, sort of the, the adult um, teams, to physiotherapists. Most of them have access to somebody with a bag with some water and some Vaseline and a few 4 by 4s in it. Uh, and that's what they regard as first aid, but it's, it's, it's um, probably not uh, as good as they think it is. So we developed this Safe Rugby programme in partnership with some colleagues um, from the Scottish Rugby Union. And um, they've been running a programme called Scum Caps, Scrum Caps over there for several years. Uh, and there are many other organisations, many other rugby unions around the world who run some similar type programme. So we've developed um, Safe Rugby. 
all of the different levels, which I'll show you now in a second, are similar in, in that they cover very similar topics. Mainly, these are adaptations of emergency medicine and pre-hospital emergency medicine or emergency care protocols. So it follows the A, C, B, C, D, E, F, G type sort of scenario. Uh, but we, for most of our uh, um, um, participants, we bring it right down to very, very basic stuff. How to recognize when somebody's sick versus not sick, how to manage them in the first 10 or 15 minutes before help arrives, or to figure out that they're actually not that sick and they can get up and walk off the pitch themselves. Um, and we've had probably in the region of about 600 people complete the course at some level over the last um, seven or eight months with a plan to run uh, another 600 or 700 um, through the program between now and the end of the season, which is sort of May, June-ish. Uh, there's no point in talking to the summer because they don't know. Um, so, as part of the Save Rugby program, at all levels, we have an integrated uh, Irish Heart Foundation uh, AED BLS um, uh, training program, and, and in, in partnership with Bridget, we've been using the online uh, method, so uh, for all of our participants, they will have access to uh, the AHA key, they will do their uh, online modules in the week or two before the program, and then we'll come and just do the skills. Um, uh, and that forms probably only about an hour and a half in the morning and then the rest of the day is very basic initial assessment and approach to the patient and we do some stuff about managing fractures and joint injuries, spinal immobilisation, uh, dealing with the unconscious player. Uh, we also have a concussion awareness part uh, of the programme. Uh, we do other bits and pieces about the type of equipment that they should have and how they should perhaps manage their medical uh, requirements in the club uh, on an ongoing basis and perhaps on the day of a game uh, when they expect a lot of people to be there. Um, our Safe Rugby programme is divided into three levels. Uh, level three is sort of the high end and that's restricted to people who have a medical qualification or, or are um, physiotherapists or other healthcare professionals who are primarily um, working, being paid by Irish Rugby either with the national teams or with the provincial teams at some sort of representative level. So Aina Falvey, for example, and, and Foxy, the guys who look after the Irish senior team who are playing next week, uh, they've all completed this program. And the core content of the course is exactly the same as the guys in Newbridge Rugby Club who did the program with us a couple of weeks ago. Um, obviously, you are dealing with some more complex uh, procedures and manoeuvres when you're dealing with the level three, but it's the same program. Uh, we run a, a, this program probably once a year um, uh, with a refresher every, every other year. Uh, the level two is very similar to the level three, but there's no, um, um, the formal assessment isn't as, as uh, formal, I suppose. And this is for uh, mainly J GPs and uh, physios who are um, associated with rugby clubs and, and schools around the country. And we run probably s somewhere between four and six of them every year. Uh, our key goal is to run out the level one program, which is a one day, sort of nine o'clock to about four o'clock. Um, and that's for non-medical people. So primarily the club coaches at underage level, to be honest with you, most of them are, our participants have been so far. Uh, but we also open it up to referees and the players themselves, parents, guardians, anybody who would be uh, attending rugby games and will be uh, in a position to render care. Uh, our, like I said, our goal is, is to probably have about 1,200 places or 1,200 people through the programme this year. A uh, couple of nice photographs, uh, Dr. Jeff King, uh, relaxing and taking it easy there. Uh, a couple of months ago, himself and John Fitz, who have an involvement with Nace Rugby Club, came to one of our programmes in the Aviva, and we tied Jeff up and trying to extract more money from him. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, Joe, Joe Smith and Les Kiss and John Plumtree, who are the Irish coaching, the senior coaching people, uh, I sent them an email jestingly saying, why are you going to come to one of our safe programmes? And they arrived in a quarter to nine in the Aviva one morning to do the course. So, uh, nice photograph. When you see that the very highest people in the country are doing the programme, I think it's, it adds value and it tries to drive the message across. Very quickly, Ben Robinson, some of you who may be aware, uh, unfortunately poor old Ben, uh, suffered a, a, a concussion or a number of concussion incidents and died um, as a result of those concussions uh, a couple of years ago back up in Ulster. Um, and that has led a lot of our, our concussion awareness stuff. Most of you, again, if you have any sort of interest in sport, will be aware of, of the George Smith concussion and, and some of the stuff surrounding some Brian O'Driscoll's uh, various concussions over the last couple of years. Uh, so we've been managing, um, uh, one of our first big strategies has been to try and get uh, some concussion awareness out there amongst the clubs and schools. We've held about 20 odd open days uh, just dealing with concussion. 
uh, and we've been doing that over, over the last year or so, certainly over the last five months in particular. Um, so we've uh, given out this concussion poster to all of our schools. Uh, and we've made a concussion awareness guide available and we've just posted that out to schools and clubs around the country over the last few days and there are some online stuff coming up. Um, what's been uh, very important for me is to have, uh, and probably one of the reasons I find myself in this position, is that I have access to 20 or 30 advanced paramedics and paramedics who are colleagues of mine in the National Ambulance Service all around the country who do that training for me and with me. Uh, many of them are in the room. Uh, and without that, it, 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 it probably wouldn't be the success that it is. We're early days, we have a good bit of work to do. Um, I get to meet very good people, and though I'm from uh, Wicklow, I'm a Munster fan, so when you get to meet these guys, it's great fun. Uh, if any of you want to talk to me at some stage later on, if you have an involvement in a, in a rugby club or whatever, I have a number of defibs that I'm trying to get out and give to rugby clubs for nothing uh, and provide some safe rugby training. Um, Shane Safe is my Twitter, I should have put that up, seeing as Jonah talked about it. Thanks very much.